In this lesson, we'll learn about the importance of compositing tags inside of Cinema 4D. Okay, so here I have a scene, same alleyway, where we have a, a wall object, the uh, cone, and what I've done is, in this area, I have just a simple plane that has a couple of uh, textures applied to it to give it sort of the look of a water puddle. So I have sort of a transparency map on here and a little bit of a bump map. So if I press Alt-R on my keyboard, you can see what we have here. Now just to make this a little bit easier for you to see, what I'll do is go into my interactive render region settings. Just right click on one of these little corner handles. Let's go into the region settings and what I'll do is turn off this gadget overlay. That'll make it just a little bit easier for you to see what I'm uh, doing here. So what we have is this, again, just a simple plane object. We have a uh, light in our scene that is casting shadows. And one of the things that is sort of breaking the realism of this puddle is the fact that we can sort of see the shadows on the edge of this uh, surface here. So sort of the shadows that are being cast along this edge. So again, it's really sort of breaking the illusion. Now what I'd like to do is remove the shadows from this object, and we can do that with a feature in Cinema 4D called a compositing tag. So what we need to do is select the object that we want to apply this tag to. This compositing tag is going to be found underneath this tags menu. We're going to go to Cinema 4D tags, and up toward the top we have a compositing tag. Now there's actually two types. We have a compositing and then another that's called an external compositing. These are two totally different things. What we're going to focus on is just the regular compositing tag. So once we apply this, here's our tag that sits on this water puddle object. And with this tag selected, we can just click on it up here to bring open these attributes. So we have the ability for this object to now be able to cast shadows, uh, receive shadows. We can disable all of these things. So for example, if we don't want this object to cast any shadows, we just now go into this compositing tag, disable cast shadows, and there we go. All of the other objects in my scene still cast shadows, except for this one object. And we can get really, really heavy in our control on a per object basis. So uh, let's say we go to this cone back here. I'll select that. That's going to be this cone 3 with that selected. Let's apply a compositing tag to that one. So once again, a compositing tag. There we go. We can see our tag has now been applied to cone 3, which is this guy back here. So for example, let's say that now I have this object and everything looks good, but maybe I just don't want this cone to be seen in the reflection from my puddle. Well, with that object and its compositing tag, we could tell this cone to not be seen by any sort of reflections. So now if I disable that, if you look closely, you can see the object is still visible, but that cone is no longer seen by the reflections cast from this puddle. We can turn that on just to see what we had before and what we get now. So very nice. Uh, we could maybe even tell this object if we don't want it to be seen by the camera. We could have that object be invisible to the camera, but it still casts shadows. So we can disable that ability to cast shadows, and so on and so forth. So you can start to see where we get really, really high levels of control uh, with this really, really powerful little compositing tag. So let's say I turn the cast shadows back on. And the reflection, again, we could do this on a per object basis, so let's say that looks good. Now let's come in here and add uh, maybe a little bit of ambient occlusion. So let's go back into our render settings. We could do that from right up here. Let's say we add in a little bit of ambient occlusion. So let's go to our effects, add in ambient occlusion, and let's let that render out. Now once we start to add in some ambient occlusion, we get this really, really dark area right here. And the reason for that is because this object that we're using, again, is just a simple plane. So where the transparency is taking effect, we're still getting that sort of ambient occlusion happening right in there. Because, again, if you recall from our lesson on ambient occlusion, it's just a distance-based shader. So where these two surfaces, this plane and the sidewalk, are very close together, we're getting this ambient occlusion effect, but we can still see it through the transparency. So we could fix that by turning on this Evaluate Transparency option in the ambient occlusion. That will uh, force the ambient occlusion to obey the transparency that we have here. Now that's good, but you can see that now we have the ambient occlusion that's still sort of creating this little bit of an edge around here. So let's just close out these render settings. What we could do is go back to the water puddle, go back to its compositing tag, and we could disable its ability to be seen by ambient occlusion. So now if I turn that off, if you watch closely when this re-renders, 
Now you can see no more ambient occlusion being calculated on that surface, but it still leaves the ambient occlusion intact for everything else in my scene. So these compositing tags are, again, very, very powerful, and as you start to work on your own Cinema 4D scenes, lighting, rendering materials, you're going to find yourself using these quite a bit for uh, special circumstances like this. Now, as we start to get into some of our next few lessons, we will take a look at some of these other options for things like the exclusion, the object buffer, and take a look at where we can start to use some of those things. But for now, this is the primary use for the compositing tag inside of Cinema 4D.